Welcome to NTA Nationwide. I'm Elizabeth Stover. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has adjourned the case seeking to stop INEC from collating the governorship election results in Bochi State to Thursday, 21st March 2019. The presiding judge, Justice Inyang Ekwa, gave the order this Wednesday in Abuja. Olabode Arewa reports. Matter with borders on lack of fair hearing was fired by the All Progressives Congress and the incumbent Bauchi State Governor Muhammad Abubakar, who is the party's candidate in the March 9 governorship poll. His counsel, Ahmed Raji, senior advocate of Nigeria, confirmed receipt of INEX counter affidavit challenging the court's jurisdiction to hear the matter. He prayed for a short adjournment to respond to INEX preliminary objections. The court, while adjourning the case to Thursday, Express his readiness to give accelerated hearing to the matter. Governor Abubakar and the All Progressives Congress want INEC to revert to his earlier decision that it would hold supplementary elections on 23rd of March 2019 in Tafar Balua local government area of Bauchi State. From the Federal High Court in Abuja, on Labo Darewa, NTA News. The Senate is to investigate alleged inconsistent application of electoral laws by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in the 2019 general elections. The legislators advised that the military stay away from elections as they also urged President Mohamed Buhari to assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill for a better electoral process. The Senate also confirmed the appointment of Abu Abdu Abubakar representing Northwest as a non-executive director of the board of the Central Bank of Nigeria. It received the report of its committee on diaspora and non-governmental organization and the confirmation of the nomination of Abike Dabiri Erewa for appointment as chairman and executive of, and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Judicial officers, especially justices, that are handing election petitions are being charged to be upright in dispensing justice by upholding the rule of law. President, Court of Appeal, Justice Zainab Bukachua gave the charge at an induction course that is underway in Abuja for judicial officers who will be involved in the administration of justice on election matters. Omenka Amarachiku reports. Seated here are the justices of the appeal court, preparing for the upcoming challenge ahead. By the end of this week, they will be in their various states of posting to adjudicate over election petitions arising from the 2019 general elections and the appeals that will follow suit by the aggrieved parties. Each and every one of you would be closely monitored by my office, and I will not hesitate to descend on any judge who is found wanting in the discharge of his or her duties. By the end of this induction training, you'll all be abreast with what is expected of you, and I'm sure by that time, by the time you resume your duty post, you'll be ready to carry out the task assiduously. The induction course is for judicial officers to cross-fertilize ideas on ways of adjudicating on matters arising from pre-election as well as post-election activities. In Abuja, Omenka Marchuku, NTN News.
And political actors are tasked on good governance that translates to industrialization. This is the standpoint of discussions on NTA's current affairs program Tuesday Live as they stressed that public service is about trust and accountability. Talatwe Ezerike reports. It is a globally asserted norm that democracy is government of the people, by the people and for the people. Analysts say Nigerians understand this, but are worried over factors that slow the pace of electoral process. Of concern for many are issues such as the do and die politics, wrong ideology, weak institution and poor commitment to the pursuit of national interest for overall growth. We've seen democracy operates that it can be gotten right with the appropriate reforms and one of the most important reforms is the electoral act. The political class must critically look at particularly the internal party democracy. The biggest challenges with the Nigerian democratic experience is actually the humongous cost of governance that we grapple with. To devote a lot more resources to capital expenditure. And so at the end of the day, a great deal of our spending is in the area of recurrent expenditure. And this is not sustainable. Governance, they say, is about the people to whom sovereignty belongs. As such, some scholars say issues of social contract be taken seriously at all levels. What is paramount? for us in the private sector is the creation of an enabling environment for investors to strengthen the capacity of this economy to create jobs. We must sit down and think and come up with a very long-term industrial development master plan and then passion out agricultural value addition oriented policy. At a time like this, developmentalists will advise on right political culture to advance good governance and it is generally believed that it's all about unity of purpose to stand Nigeria out in the committee of nations. Talati Ezeriki, NTA News. Still on the political scene, checkmating the different behavior of the political class, mentoring younger politicians on the right political values and addressing the issue of Godfatherism are some of the issues highlighted as key in inculcating decent values in the Nigerian political class. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria made the observation while discussing the topic political class and future of Nigeria's democracy. Murjana to Adam Said reports. The return to democracy in 1999 was highly celebrated because it was believed to be the hope for the hopeless, the voice for the voiceless, and above all, a vehicle conveying development across board. Good morning, Nigeria guests say Nigeria political system has been characterized by some events lately likely to threaten the country's growing democracy. The economy is very fundamental. Uh, the level of political awareness by the members of the public, the level of education, the uh, value system in the society, all these coalesce to bring about the, um, uh, the disturbing actions of certain actors that tend to compromise the integrity of our electoral process. We need to improve the legal processes that lead to the selection of the credible people we want to put in our positions of responsibility. Your foundation is very important and that's where as the macro has a lot to do with the micro. And so we should look at the way we are growing our children, the, the topics we have in school, the curricula, the, the values we put in society. When you have solid values in place, it becomes very difficult to actually sway you in the midst of whatever you are say, you're seeing. You look at the issue of where we have about quite a number of about 70 something political parties, we, in which 71 of them could not make 2% of the total vote. Therefore, we must know and we must define how many people will stand an election. What are the requirements for one to even say, I want to contest for presidency by a political party? However, the guests believe that people's expectations began to fade 
when the issue of money politics and godfatherism become the evil element hindering the engagement of democracy. The guests finally submitted that politicians must play by the rule of the game and understand that politics is supposed to be a service to humanity and fatherland rather than self-serving. In Abuja, Morjana to Adam Said, NT News. Meanwhile, a group of youths in Kano are clamoring for peaceful conduct of the governorship rerun in the state, asking key political actors to conduct themselves within the confines of the law. They staged a peaceful rally to denounce the use of social media platform in a negative way and hate speech as a means of electioneering campaign. Abdullah Mustafa reports that the youths were at the government house Kano to seek for the understanding of Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduji. Uh, this cross-section of youth made up of representatives of various civil society and youth organizations, including those of student union governments of various tertiary institutions across Kano State. And they are out on this uh, procession due to the planned supplementary election in Kano State uh, due to cancellation in about 88 polling units across 30 local government areas across Kano State. Uh, with me is one of the representatives of these uh, civil society organizations and groups, uh, Abu Karma. Muhammad General, who will tell us more about this? Well, the essence of this gathering is, of course, as you have that uh, we realize with dismay that most politicians, especially the leaders of major political parties in the state, are uh, uttering fake uh, uh, head speeches that is generating tempo within the society. Uh, we deem it necessary not to fold our arms as peace organizations. This uh, uh, procession for the youth to disregard fake news and uh, rumor being peddled uh, on the social media platforms and including fake platforms being created to fund the embers of uh, uh, disunity and hate among the youth. As the governor of Kano State, I have done all what I could do to ensure that Kano State uh, with the release of white pigeons and assurance uh, given by Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduje, it is the expectation of these uh, youth that uh, the forthcoming supplementary elections will be peaceful and the outcome will be accepted by the majority of Kano people. Abdullah Mustafa, NTN News. You're watching NTA Nationwide. Lagos State Government sets panel to investigate collapsed building. Michael has details of this and other reports. Over to you, Michael. Elizabeth, and welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Government has set up a five-man panel to investigate the immediate and remote causes of the three-story building which collapsed at Itafaji area of Lagos Island leaving several injured and some dead. Nusao Sula has details. Inaugurating the panel, comprising specialized professionals from the private sector and the built environment, Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Prince Rotimi Ogunle, disclosed that the terms of reference of the panel includes to profile remedial measures to stem further building collapse in the future, adding that the panel was also to determine the level of negligence on the part of the developer or owner and the role of the state government. We we'll, uh, always have discussions with all the professional bodies and that is why you find that the, the, the team that we have assembled to do this work, this panel, is made up of qualified professionals in the different professions. The commissioner said the recommendation of the panel would be acted upon as government is determined to stem the tide of collapsed building in the states. Engage professionals. Obtain approvals. When you obtain approval from us, you have taken a major step towards ensuring safety. If any of our staff come to ask for you for money to be paid to him, please don't do it. Chairman of the panel and a retired permanent secretary in Lagos State, Engineer Wasu Olokunola, said the panel would ensure it does a thorough job as the members are capable and possessed wealth of experience. In Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NTA News. 
Access to funding private sector participation and political will on the side of government have been identified as panacea to reducing maternal mortality in Nigeria. Professor of Obstetric and Gynecology, University, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Adetu Kumbo Fabangu, stated this while speaking at the Stephen Oluwole Awukoya Foundation for Science Education in Lagos. Ken Ebilugi reports. World Health Organization, United Nations Population and World Bank in 2015 revealed that mortality rate for Nigeria was 814 deaths per 100,000 life birth. Professor Adetokumbo Fabanwo attributed this increase in maternal death in the country to various factors. These include unwanted pregnancy by women, excessive bleeding during labor, lack of access to maternity services, amongst others. Professor Fabanwo, however, suggested way forward. Legislation on the setting up of standard facilities, transportation, so many things that government must make up its mind. Government will try, but it's not for government alone, even we ourselves and the staff in the hospitals must be more human and humane in the approach in treating patients. If we're able to put in place you know, the processes that will help these women when right from the time that they get pregnant to the time that they're going to give birth, you know, and, you know, the facilities that will take care of them. I think it will be easy. Meanwhile, eight postgraduate students received scholarship award from the Stephen Oluwole Awokoya Foundation for Science Education. People should use their, whatever they have, to encourage intelligent people in Nigeria so that uh, these young ones can grow up and develop this country. Stephen Uluwole Awokoya Foundation for Science Education was established 24 years ago. The aim is to promote science education in Nigerian institution of higher learning. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. The need for women to be given more responsibilities in governance has again been advocated. This was the fallout of a ceremony to celebrate women who are making positive impact on the economy in the maritime domain. Imel Dori, who compared this report, said the event is in commemoration of the United Nations International Women's Day. The role of women as major contributors to the economy cannot be overemphasized. This is because their knowledge and expertise have been brought to bear in every sector which translates to growth and development. However, the issue of gender parity has been identified as a challenge. This is why these women are raising awareness on the need for more women participation in leadership positions. This event was also an opportunity for women in the maritime industry to be celebrated. We can offer what is needed in the industry and in the society. And we want them to know that giving us 40% is not too much. We have all categories of women doing great things in the maritime industry. And I think it's time to include them in the mainstream politics. Organizers say Plans are underway to encourage and empower 50,000 women yearly with grants to grow small businesses. When we talk about empowering women, it's just not only issue of uh, maybe financing, it's also issue of training, issue of financing, issue of giving grants. There is need for them to be assisted and to be supported to ensure that they reach their objectives and of course to be able to have their mission, mission accomplished. The women used the opportunity to call on federal government to introduce a gender character policy with 40% employment opportunity reservations for women in both public and private sectors of the economy. That's our contribution from Lagos. We now join our Sokoto Network Center where Nora Wakili is standing by for stories from that zone. Hello, Nora. Thank you, Michael, and welcome to Sokoto. To us ensuring the H3 rerun elections in Sokoto State, political parties have signed a knockout to maintain peace in the state. Musa Abaka reports that the effort is initiated by the National Peace Committee, the report. 
The stakes are high for contending political parties, even higher for the state, considering the importance of peace and the socio-economic development of the society. Now, the town hall meeting organized by the National Peace Committee seeks to re-echo the need for political parties to commit to peace during and after the elections. prayer is that those who win will really win well and that those who lose will know that there has to be another day. It's only Allah who gives power to whom he wishes and takes away, takes away from whom he wishes. That before, by the summing of this election, the National Assembly will put an eleven dog in the place so that election tribunal, election officers tribunal can be created so that people can be prosecuted. It is our hope that this activity will provide an opportunity for all those to come together irrespective of religion, ethnic or political affiliation, reflect on the true state of Sokoto in a bid to achieve a greater height. The National Peace Committee appealed to residents to participate in the rerun election by exercising their vote and rights. In Sokoto, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. Wife of Sokoto State Governor Maria Mayoro Amin Waziri Tambol has spent humanitarian visit to Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Kori. The latter ablai reports that the governor's wife was also at Sokoto Central Prison and remained home. The report. The aim of the visit to the facilities is to enable her to interact with the management, patients, and the inmates, as well as offer some assistance to them. At the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Kori, the wife of the state governor, Maria Mayro Aminu Azire Tambol, was received by the chief medical director of the hospital, Dr. Shi Husali. The CMD conducted her around the male and female medical wards, where she interacted with the patients behind camera. We just came on a humanitarian um, visit. Like you know, we always go to different um, areas and in and out of the state to boost the morale of the ill and then to support where we can. That's why we're here. Maria Mero Amino Aziri Tambol paid similar visit to the Sakoto Central Prison and the remand home. Food items, cosmetics, and toiletries were presented to the patients at the psychiatric hospital quarry and the inmates at the Sokoto Central Prison and remained home. In Sokoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. NAFTIP and International Organization on Accelerated Campaign Against Human Trafficking. Details of this and more after these messages. Stay tuned. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thank you for staying with us. Nigeria's anti-human trafficking agency is leading a campaign to eradicate the human trade, which has assumed serious proportions. NAPTIP is now joining hands with international bodies to stamp out trafficking as an organized crime. Usman Ali reports from Benin, Edo State. It's a campaign which began a few weeks ago in Mali a country identified as chunk for human trafficking with an estimated 20,000 Nigerians looking after the federal government for rescue and justice. Testing its own formula, 
National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is sharpening its teeth to bite, working hand in hand with foreign security agencies. The agency also wants to make it timid and difficult for human smugglers. And in Nigeria, Edo State being famous with the crime, the agency has set a target on sensitization, partnership and prosecution. The United Nations Office for Drugs and Crime, International Office for Migration are all collaborating with NAPTIP to stamp out human trafficking. Just as Nigeria's security operatives and Edo State government are tactfully devising new methods to deal with the problem. The problems of human trafficking and irregular migration have become of great national concern, especially with the large number of Nigerians trapped in sexual and labor exploitation in various African and European countries. It's not just about you know dealing with it as a crime. No, it's not going to solve. So we're going to go back to the process. We're going to see how to support the weakest in our communities. Um, you know, ensure that we begin to reorientate the young ones, give them good education, try to make them feel at home at home. And for the young ones, they now understand better how perpetrators lured their victims. Girls in Emagro and Idia colleges of Benin City say once beaten twice shy. Usman Aliu, NTA News. The Chief of Air Staff's quarterly conference has commenced in Abuja with a view to consolidating on successes achieved in securing the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Naja Atutijani reports. Senior air officers and commandants of the more than 17 Nigerian Air Force bases across the country. In his opening remarks, the Chief of the Air Staff talked about the restructuring that the Nigerian Air Force has undergone in the last three and a half years. This conference will consolidate on those achievements while implementing policies and plans that will take the Nigerian Air Force to greater heights in line with international best practices. The Chief of the Air Staff also hinted at the acquisition of new logistics including gunships. We are expecting the Augusta 109 power helicopter gunship from Italy and the President and Commander-in-Chief will be invited to induct the gunship in a ceremony. The acquisition will boost ongoing counter-terrorism operations in the Northwest and Northeast as well as upgrade the Nigerian Air Force fleet in line with global best practices. Also on the agenda at the two-day conference are security briefs and projections for the next quarter. Meanwhile, the Chief of the Air Staff has also inaugurated the Nigerian Air Force Geospatial Intelligence Data Center, equipped with high-tech hardware and software. The center is expected to support Nigerian Air Force operations, as well as collaborate with other security agencies during joint operations and in the area of crisis and disaster management. Providing support to the initiative with their expertise were the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Oluni Shakin, the Comptroller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, and other dignitaries. The center will deploy satellites and other space technologies for greater efficiency. Najaa Tutijani, NTA News. In Kaduna Network Center is next on Nationwide with Sleiman. It's over to you, Sleiman. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, and a warm welcome to Kaduna. Kano State will soon enjoy uninterrupted power supply following the installation of 150 megavolt ampere of electricity by the federal government expected to inject required energy for the resuscitation of ailing industries in the state. Muhammad Rabiu Ali has the details. Kano State is battling with epileptic power supply, which led to the closure of a sizable percentage of industries. These had an adverse economic consequences on the people of the state. But the narrative has changed since the coming of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. Kumbodo Transmission Station in Kano State has three transformers 
the distributed power to neighboring Jigawa, Katsina, and some parts of Bochi State with low capacity. With the additional 150 megavolt ampere transformer, which is under installation, the remaining three will be at ease to provide sufficient power. We have revived the other 150 MB, so we can, our limit is about 450. Now the other transformer is, is now under installations. So we are hoping to finish this uh, job by God's grace in maybe uh, one month. When we finish it, then we will have a full capacity of the substation, which has almost four transformers. President in Kano say there is a significant improvement compared to what is obtainable in the past. With this development, the 150 megavolt umpire, when completely installed, will assist in boosting electricity supply in Kano and other neighboring states. Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTA News. And the deputy governor-elect of Kaduna State, Hadiza Balarabi, is optimistic that the second tenure of Governor Nasr Ahmad Arufai will be transformative and impact more on the people of the state. She expressed her optimism while inaugurating the transition committee set up to prioritize development agenda for the new government. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. The 38 member transition committee headed by the deputy governor elected to Adiza Balarebe is mandated to review the four years administration of Governor Nasru Ahmad Erufai with a view to setting a more pragmatic agenda for his second tenure. Inaugurating the committee on behalf of the governor, Hadiza Balarebi assured the people that, that critical infrastructure and welfare of the people, among other developmental issues, will remain the focus of the government. Four years ago, we were all party to this administration's promise to make Kaduna State great again. Over these years, a lot of work has gone into fulfilling the promises made, and despite numerous challenges, we endured. What this fears means, therefore, is the fact that it is crucial and vital that a smooth, successful, and seamless transition into the next phase of governance is assured. Esteemed committee members, I'm hopeful that it can only get better and certainly do look forward to opportunities this shift has to offer aimed at making lives better for the good people of Kaduna State. The committee, which has the secretary to the state government, Balare Belon Abbas, and special assistant to the governor of media and communication, Muiwa Adeke, as the vice chairman and secretary, respectively, is also to make arrangements for the swearing in ceremony of the new administration in Kaduna. Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Governor Muhammad Badaru Abubakar of Jigao State has commended the people of the state for overwhelmingly electing candidates of the All Progressives Congress in the just concluded general elections, assuring them of more dividends of democracy. The governor was speaking at an APC stakeholders meeting to review the elections. Hawahaliru Haruna has the details. The governing All Progressive Congress, APC, in Jigawa State, emerged victorious in the just concluded elections, winning governorship and all the national and state assembly seats. This meeting, convened by Governor Abadir Abubakar, is to thank all party members and prepare on the tax ahead. The governor announced the introduction of a review mechanism on his achievements at both local and state administration, which will guide his new policy direction. He stated that economic empowerment, agricultural revolution, and security will continue to be the priority of the state government. Alhaji Umar Melody is the deputy governor-elect and speaks on the issues. In Jigawa State, all you need to do is you need to build an economy. You need to build the economy of the state, economy that is sustainable, where people can be able to work independently without recourse to government. People will be able to have what they are going to do, so that if you do that, you grow businesses. Once you grow businesses, then you are putting the economy in the right direction, and that will be sustainable. The former deputy governor, Ibrahim Hassan Hadeja, has been elected as a senator from D.C. Hawa Haruna, NTA News. And with that report, it's back to you, Elizabeth, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon.
Thank you, Suleiman. Now, it's barely one year when the present government enacted Executive Order 001 with primary aim of ease of doing business in Nigeria. Interest groups are appraising the level of implementation of the order at a validation workshop in Abuja. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. Executive Order 001 came into effect in 2018 as a result of the bureaucracies in setting up businesses in Nigeria with multiple agencies with similar mandate. As a one-stop shop strategy where investors both local and foreign are attended to in good time as well as encouraging competition to boost the nation's economy, assessing the initiative so far was in order. Although it is widely recognized that the, since, since the implementation of the executive order, Nigeria has made some appreciable progress to reduce administrative burden in the administration of new businesses. While these measures are welcome, there are still other inherent administrative burdens to successful business operations in Nigeria. For the various interest groups, there is room for improvement and greater synergy by all agencies involved in ease of doing business. You know, a lot of uh, obstacles and hindrances that uh, people experience when they come to Nigeria, they are, they are now feeling that things are working now. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed, NTA News. You're watching NTA Nationwide. 19 physically challenged persons empowered in Edo State. And Agatha brings us details of this and more. Over to you, Agatha. Thank you, Elizabeth. A warm welcome to Benin. About 50 prisoners in Edo State are to regain their freedom soon. It is in line with the mandate of the Presidential Committee on Prison Decongestion and Reform. Ivia Omori reports that the team is in Benin. In 2017, the federal government inaugurated the Presidential Committee on Prison Decongestion and Reform to aid systematic decongestion of all prisons in the country. So far, the committee, led by FCT Chief Judge Justice Ishak Belu, has visited 14 states. This time around, they are in Benin City, Edo State. Precisely now, we are at the Benin Central Prison. The chairman of the committee, the Chief Justice of Edo State, and the Attorney General of the state, they are presently seated, trying to find out what the case and the problem has been with the prisoners. So far, two of them are already out. They are talking to them, trying to interrogate. I know the way forward for these ones. There's a fine of 100 uh, Southern Nora. The minister of Justice of the Federation is paying this uh, fine. The team earlier visited the governor of Edo State. We have the governor's confirming a place in the interim before we submit our report to the federal government articulating those areas that require uh, immediate needs uh, is enhancing facilities within the prison formations. For Godwin Obaseki, the state has keyed into the prison reform initiative of the federal government. We have committed ourselves to providing every support required to make the um, judicial process a lot more efficient. Government is not alone in this. It is partnering non-governmental organizations as evident in membership of the committee to ensure proper rehabilitation and reintegration of released prisoners. In Benin, Ivie Omoyi, NTA News. And the story of some persons living with disabilities in Edo State has changed. This is because 19 of them have been employed into the state civil service and posted to different ministries and parastatals. It is courtesy of Governor Gordon Obaseki. Again, here is Ivie Omori with the report. Early this year, President Muhammad Buhari signed the disability bill into law that will henceforth criminalize discrimination against persons living with disabilities. This also means that a quarter should be reserved for these special ones in all sectors. The state government, led by Godino Basiti, appears to have taken the lead on this one. 19 of them with various disabilities have been incorporated into the state civil service. I want to congratulate the government and thank them for making the administration inclusive of people with disabilities. For charity or more ye and their likes, getting this job is the much talked about light at the end of the tunnel. It's a joy to my family. I'm really very happy. My heart is glad. I give God the glory. To ensure these ones strive in their workplace, an orientation program was organized for them Civil service rules were spelled out 
as well as advices on how to go about their duties regardless of their plights. Go to work, be punctual, even if you found one thing, and ensure they do not see exams. So when the promotion comes, they'll be, they be promoted accordingly. Praises to God and gratitude to the government did not stop pouring out from the mouths of these newly employed civil servants. In Benin, Ivie Omoui, NTA News. And one week after gunmen attacked the Afuze Divisional Police Headquarters in the Oman East local government area of Edo State, normalcy has returned to the town. Victor John Archer reports that officers of the division are going about their duties. A visit to the Afuze Divisional Police Office revealed that the officers and men are going about their normal duties under the tree with the supervision of the Divisional Crime Officer Rufus Awolawo. A team of engineers from the State Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development are on ground to survey the destroyed facility and report to the state government for renovation. Some of the suspects have been arrested by the State Police Command while the bodies of the police officers killed in the attack are still in the mortuary. Very, very conducive. There's space everywhere, squire. We should help the police to guide us. The Afuze Divisional Police Office was attacked by unknown gunmen last week Tuesday, killing two female police officers, an inspector, and the Divisional Police Officer in Afuze, Victor Odion Acha, and the News. That ends our package. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you, Agatha. Our participants at a sensitization meeting organized by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission are advocating adequate funding of malnutrition centers in the country. Joy Uzo reports that this comes after several attempts to find solution to deficiency of basic micronutrients in staple food. Okay, I'm afraid we cannot bring that story to you right now. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has described as a huge shock and a monumental loss the death of the Emir of Patigi, Al Haji Ibrahim Chata Umar. The Emir died Tuesday night at the age of 65. In a statement by special assistant to the minister, Shegun Adeyemi, the minister condoled with the Emir of Ilorin, Alhaji Ibrahim Sulugambari, the government and people of Kwara State, and in particular, the people of Patigi over the loss. He described the late Emir, who was the vice chairman of the state's traditional council as a man of peace, a great custodian of his people's culture, and a father to all, saying, saying his wise counsel and leadership will be greatly missed, especially at this time in the history of Kwara State. He prayed that God grants the late Emir Algerna Fidos and comfort the people he left behind. And that's so much we can take on NTA Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Bye for now.